So eventually we got to get these wings out of the garage. Well, we keep chipping away on it. Eventually they'll get done. Yeah. I keep looking at it at the quick build instructions and realize there's just not that much that you have to do. So it seems easy. It seems like I could do it in a weekend. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but, um, and I think because it seems so easy, I'm not as motivated to get out here and put in the long, hard days. Yeah. But what have we done in the wing so far? We've talked a little bit in the past about it. Um, finish off the fuel tanks. Uh, we're still in the process of leak testing. I'm going to reach out to our friend Kevin and ask him for some advice on exactly how the leak test is. I'm, I'm missing something. It's like we're not doing something right. Yeah. It every it looks like it's Fine. solid. It just it leaks like a sieve out of my test gear. So it's the, it's the act of testing it that's leaking, but everything else seems to be solid. So I'm, I'm going to work with Kevin to figure out what the um, answer to that. Yeah, is. just to make yeah. sure we do that right. But I'm not very concerned about it. Uh, I've got the magnetometer installed. I've uh, started working on the Aralon trim. Uh, and then all the wiring is roughly installed. We need to... Uh, kind of finish off uh, tidying up the wiring, run the pitot tubes. Uh, we got to figure out our strategy there because the quick build wings don't have quite enough ports for the two tubes that you need to run for the AOA from Garmin. Um, we can either run it down the J channel, which I'm kind of leaning towards, or we can have a really frustrating project to figure out how to add some um, some extra lightning holes through uh, the ribs that are really hard to reach. Tell us what you did, because we could use some advice. Yes, I've seen a couple of videos from a couple of different people who have different strategies. Uh, we are moving the pitot tube one rib out from where the plans call. Um, I, I don't know, the J channel's kind of winning my, uh, my thoughts right now, but we'll see. Um, so once we get that done, then um, we're getting prepared for the push rods, as you see here. So our classic uh, red paint job on all of our push tubes. Got the, the big ones that go down the length of the wing all done. Um, I have not um, set them to the right distance yet, but we'll do that um, as we install them. And then the smaller push rods that go from the bell crank to the actual aerial on itself. Um, Thought these would be really easy with the drill press, but getting the holes to line up was a little bit more challenging than I was expecting. Um, there, if I look closely, I'm not as happy with the job we did, but it's a, uh, it'll work, it'll fly. The goal is don't fall apart, right? Yep. And if we decide later, this is a really easy part to swap out and rebuild if we decide to do it later, but this is, this is more than enough, nice and strong, um, and will fly well. I didn't like the whole use an extra long rivet and squeeze it, and I was just like, this is weird. Yeah, I'm not sure what alternative you would do, but it's in there, and it's not going anywhere. Um, getting these rod ends in was interesting because the plans tell you when you put these in to make sure you file it down for a snug, but... Snug fit and when I went after priming it, I put it in and it's like, uh, that's not even snug. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's no need to file that down. The plans don't mention filing at all in this, but there's no way that will fit in. I actually tried to force one in and uh, almost created a problem that we yeah. couldn't get it out. So once I pushed it out, then we had to use the 3M wheel to really, uh, file these down so that you'd get just the right fit. Get them nice and smooth in there and so there. wouldn't lock up. And Yeah, so that was challenging. But then once we got it done, we got them in, got them, got these measured out per the specs and the plans. So my hope is we do most of our adjustment with the length on this one and leave those alone. But yeah, you know, we'll see when we get there. After we um, kind of test fit those, then we'll go to work on... Um, cleaning up the wire and finishing up everything. Then the bottom skins go on, the wings get sealed up. We um, install these permanently with all the bell crank um, mechanisms like this will get installed permanently with our roll servo in one wing. 
uh, then that wing will be closed up and kind of ready to fly. Don't forget, we got to get our fly LEDs in. Yeah, and then we go to the wing tip, which is hanging um, behind us. I'm not sure if that's in the shot or not, but uh, we got the wing tips up there. We'll finish up the fly LED uh, boards on the um, wing tips. Um, I've been working with Paul and Stein Air to uh, kind of figure out our wiring schematic for them. Um, <coughs> I love working with Stein and we're doing all of our avionics with Stein and it's turned out to, in my opinion, to be the absolute right choice to make avionics um, a lot less uh, full of anxiety for us. Stein does not typically work directly with fly LED, so you kind of have to um, plan that out a little bit, but the wiring for fly LEDs is very compatible with everything else that we're doing. So. Uh, we're finalizing those plans, and as I get that uh, closer to being done, um, I'm going to publish a video about exactly how our fly LEDs is going to integrate with our Stein Garmin system. So we'll spend some time working on the wingtips, get the acrylic um, or the, the plexiglass acrylic, whatever that uh, clear stuff is on the wingtips and the lead and edge, and then these wings will be pretty much wrapped up. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably... Um, Put them on the cart, take them to the storage unit, and take the uh, them out. fuselage back here, then it'd be finish kit time. Yeah. So that is kind of where we're at in the wings. One one small step at a time. Progress. Progress. Well, thank you for watching 14 Victor Echo. See you next time.